Beach Boys were playing on the radio. The Beatles were singing Love for Me Do. Lolita was playing in the cinemas in October 1962. Ken Casey published one tour over the cuckoo's nest. John Glenn orbited the earth. Australia had just won the most gold medals of the Commonwealth Games in Perth. The boomers were just getting into high school. Dylan first sang blowing in the wind. The U.S. Army had just started their war against the Viet Minh on the day Vasily saved the world. If I had a hammer, it was in the billboard charts. An Air Force jet crashed into the sea. The first black student had been admitted to Ole Miss University. Hewlett Packard sold a personal computer, but it wouldn't really take off for a while. Jackie had just come back from a trip to India, plunging necklines for the latest summer style. Algeria had just won their independence. Korea was rebuilding from the war. The Russian River had just flooded a couple of weeks before. Today, Vasily saved the world. The CIA was running Operation Mongoose, killing Cubans in their factories and streets. The U.S. was making plans for an invasion, still smarting from the Bay of Pigs defeat. The Soviets had sent missiles to Havana to protect themselves and their Cuban friends. Then the U.S. Navy blockaded Cuba's harbors, and there was no telling how this thing would end. Khrushchev got on TV to make it very clear Cuba is a sovereign state and If our ships are attacked We will retaliate On the day Vasily saved the world Vice Admiral Vasily Arkhipov was standing at his post on a Soviet Navy submarine. They were on patrol in international waters, one actor in a terrifying scene. They were out of radio contact, deep beneath the water, when the sub began to shake and crack. The captain said, armed the nuclear torpedoes. We're under attack. The Americans were bombing them, but in order to respond, three officers had to say go. Two were in agreement. But for some reason, the Vice Admiral said no. On the day, a silly saved the world. On the day, a silly saved the world.